also imperative that the people in this room, the scientists and the students alike, the people who are socially conscious, make decisions and make them now. Because what we're facing with climate change and the future of this planet and the future of humanity is absolutely in our hands to decide. And it is not an overstatement to say that there are two roads that are facing this entire world. And one of them is a road toward absolute crisis and further civil wars and degradation, desperation, poverty, drought, people starving. And the other road is where we take this as a wake-up call and run with the awakening of a generation that we're seeing across the world now, starting with the young people in this room, to build a movement and build a social movement that we must be built. Because I want to quote something from a flyer that states that the truth is that today's capitalists are as tied to carbon by their investments and trade relations as the plantation owners of the South were tied to slavery. And that is a deep and profound point that every one of us needs to take very seriously. And just like the slave owners in the South, who knew, who knew and understood the racism and also the bankruptcy of their own system, but were not and could not do anything to stop it, tied together with some of the northern industrialists. And it was only the independent movement of the abolitionists of slaves from the South and free slaves from the North, uniting with anti-racist and progressive white people and women struggling to unite for a social struggle that built the movement that ultimately led to the Civil War that ended slavery. We have to build a civil rights movement now to stand up against the racism of a free market economic system that is wedded to carbon emissions and carbon and change that and replace that with new leaders to come up with a new system and apply the science that the scientists here know far better than I do, but that I know is gonna take a movement in order to implement that. We have the answers, they are out there, but it's a political struggle to implement that. And that means we need leaders, and that means we need a movement. I wanna encourage everyone here to join BAM and to sign up and make sure that you talk to us after this, after this workshop, that you talk to them, or to Tony, myself, or to Monica over here with the clipboard, because what we have in front of us is a historic opportunity to write a historic wrong. And I want to say to the scientists, don't be lulled and seduced by the falsity of the idea that science is neutral, and that politics is for other people to be a part of, because it's simply not true. There was a very brilliant scientist named Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, who was in a position, and thought he was in a position, to stop fascism during World War II, and who led the Manhattan Project that developed the nuclear bomb. And after Germany surrendered, he was in a position, and the scientists who worked with him, to stop the production of that bomb and not drop it on the innocent civilians in Nagasaki, in Hiroshima, and Japan. And some of the scientists who worked with him challenged him and told him, we need to stop this. This is not what we signed up to do. Why are we going to decimate an entire nation? And he allowed himself to avert his eyes from the truth. And he chose to lie to himself and hid behind the lies of the presidents and the politicians in Congress and the corporations that were backing them, and said, but we're just scientists. What do we know about politics? Let's leave that to the experts in politics, because we just do science. But it's simply not true. He could have made, and the scientists should have made, a different decision instead of going forward with what ended up being a world historic catastrophe. This is your generation, our generation's chance to stand on the truth because we see this catastrophe unfolding before our eyes. And there are students in this room who come from Africa, from South Asia, from Mexico and Latin America, who are here because of the results of what we are not doing now and what the corporations and the politicians are, are going along with 
and continuing an interest of their own profits and expediency. We have to be that alternative leadership that stands up on the truth, because that's what for you as the scientists went into this for, was the pursuit of that. And to the students, your leadership and your fight for your lives is essential to making sure that the truth is enforced and implemented. And it's young people who have historically led civil rights struggles, historic struggles for democracy. It is on your generation and all of us together to make this happen. We can stop this. Do not be fooled by the lies that this is inevitable. It is not in any way. And I have never felt both more fear for the future of people on this planet, but also more optimism of what's possible than I do today because of what we've seen and the movement that we've seen emerging. But that movement is fragile, and that movement needs leaders, and that movement needs a plan. And to the scientists and students, it's time for us to unite together and to change the course of history for people who we know and love and for people we don't know and may never meet, but who have the right to live the lives that every single one of us hopes for ourselves and for the people we care about, we can make that difference.